It's been a minute since I last uploaded, so I'm sure you're all excited to see all the progress I made with my game. And, uh, yeah. It turns out having a full-time development job makes it harder to want to code your own projects after work. But now that I've settled into a routine, I think it's time I jump back into the game I'm working on, which currently looks like this. Pretty much every video on this channel so far has been covering topics about the engine and tools, and I've neglected the actual game. This was on purpose, honestly I prefer making engine and graphics tools more than using them, which is why I'm not using the myriad of tools that already exist. But I really want to make this game. So with that out of the way, let's open this back up and see where I left off. oh my god. To get started, let's define our states. There's going to be five states that the player can be in, which are idling, walking, dashing or rolling, attacking, and getting damaged. I'll limit the last two and save them for the combat video when that's done, which leaves us with these three to implement. As I said before, I'm using my own Entity Component System, or ECS, to build this game, which means that entities are just a collection of components that only hold data and no logic. It's up to the systems to take that data for each entity, operate on it, and produce some kind of behavior. Let's start with the two simple cases, idling and walking. To start, I'll create an empty entity for my player and attach a quad component to it, just so I can render something onto my screen to represent the player. Since the player entity has a quad component attached to it, it's automatically picked up by the render quad system I made and handled appropriately. This is one of the main perks of using an ECS. Adding and removing functionality to an entity is simply a matter of altering what components it has. Anyway, with that done, it's time to implement the player controller. I want to make a system that handles what key the player is pressing, but I only want it to operate on one entity, the player. To do that, I'm going to create what's called a tag component, which is just a component with no data in it and attach it to the player entity. This allows us to create systems that only operate on specific entities, which is exactly what we want for something like player input. As you can see, the system only queries entities with a player tag on them, along with a velocity component since we need to alter our player's speed whenever they press a key. We're not actually moving the player here though, that's handled in the movement system. This system iterates all entities with a transform and velocity component, and applies the movement by adding the velocity to the current position stored in the transform. Within my scene, the order of these systems per frame is as follows. I first set the velocity based on the input, then I apply a movement, and this is the result. For a simple movement system, this might be enough, but I'm about to add a dash mechanic. The initial idea for a dash system might be to just amplify the velocity of any entity with a dash component attached to it. But in the case where the player is standing still, the dash would do nothing since the velocity would be zero. Ideally, we'd like to have the player dash in the direction they were last facing, so we'll have to store that somehow. I'm going to create a component which stores the direction an entity is facing, stored as a two-dimensional vector. To make things easier for myself, I'll also add some constants that represent each of the four cardinal directions the player can move in as unit vectors. I'll attach this component to the player with a default direction of right, and back in my input system, instead of a key press just setting the velocity, it'll instead set the player's direction, and I'll set the velocity equal to the direction vector multiplied by some speed. Functionally, so far nothing is different, but now I'm storing the direction the player was last facing, even when they're standing still. To add a dash mechanic, I'll make a component that stores the speed of the dash as well as the duration, which is how long the dash should last for in seconds. Back in the input system, when the player presses the spacebar, I'll attach a dash component to the entity and customize the properties to my liking. I'll also make sure that if the player already has a dash component attached, then they shouldn't be able to move around while they're dashing. Now I'll make one more system to handle the entities with a dash component attached to them. In the update method for the system, I look for all entities with a dash, velocity, and direction component. Then I simply just overwrite the velocity with the direction vector multiplied by the speed of the dash this time. I also subtract delta time from the duration, and once this reaches zero, then I just remove the dash component from the current entity so it won't be picked up by the system anymore. And after spinning up the game again, I have a working dash mechanic. The only problem is that there's no cooldown, so I can spam the dash forever. The solution to this is to make one more component to store. This component stores a map with an enum representing the ability as a key, and a duration stored as a value. In my input system, I'll only allow the player to dash if the cooldown is zero, and when the dash is fired, I'll set the cooldown to whatever value I want. I'll also create a cooldown system which simply just iterates all the cooldowns and subtracts delta time from the duration, assuming it's still above zero. With all that in place, the dash now works properly. In the future, this will get more complicated as we need to deal with colliders and whatnot, but this is a great starting point. Just by adding the right components to a new entity and throwing together a quick system, I can make this new entity type that dashes around every couple of seconds. The last thing I wanted to add was adding animations based on state, so I made some animations in A-Sprite. 
As someone who's never animated anything in his life, this was by far the worst part of the video. It took me hours. But I was able to make a decent sprite sheet with different animations, and after loading it up using the tools I made for sprites in another video, this is what I ended up with. It plays different animations depending on the action I'm performing, including idling, walking, and dashing in all four directions. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I know it's not as technical as the other ones, but it was kind of fun to take a step back from the engine side of things and actually start to use the tools I built to start making the game. I promise I'll try to upload a little more frequently, about once a month seems to be the sweet spot, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.